I reduced a sentence for a guy who sexually abused a little girl, four or five years old. And the paper excoriated me for doing that. But they don't know why I did it. Sometimes what is, is not what it seems to be. On this year's Road to the White House, we would like the candidates to talk about the very relevant but somewhat ignored topic of judicial discretion, which falls under the large umbrella of criminal justice reform. A case that proves judicial discretion to be more important than ever is the case of Jason Lay. Lay's lawyer insists his client is filled with remorse that he's been repeatedly attacked in prison for abusing a child and that the only way for him to get treatment is to reduce his sentence. Judicial discretion is the power of the judge to make decisions on some matters without being bound by precedent or strict rules established by statute. From a different perspective, Judge Nelson Roop has his own definition. Be an exercise of judgment based upon the facts that would have latitude within the law to apply a different result than might otherwise be applied. Judicial discretion is a wonderful thing. It is the only truly humanitarian thing that will allow for the defendant to be rehabilitated and deterred from committing another crime, while also affording restitution and a sense of peace to the victim. Using a sense of compassion, of dignity only humans possess, judges are faced with one of the most difficult jobs imaginable, helping the bad guy learn to not be a bad guy. Minimum mandatory sentencing takes away from the judge's discretion by sentencing everyone to the same fate, even when the crimes were committed for different reasons. We have to recognize that there are uh, prosecutors and judges throughout the system who want to do the right thing and feel compassion and understand the human stories that are involved in this thing. I, I think a lot of the conversation nationally today focuses on whether prosecutors have too much discretion in terms of, of seeking mandatory minimums for nonviolent offenses, drug crimes. So I, I guess um, necessarily what we have is prosecutorial discretion taking away from judicial discretion. In some cases, people who commit crimes do them for a reason. A father who steals medicine for a sick child should not get the same sentence as someone who stole a TV for their own good. On the books, the crime is the same. Judges are able to take factors like these into account with the amount of discretion that they currently possess. But they can only do so much with the limit put on them by sentencing guidelines. Let's rewind to the 1970s. U.S. crime was rising dramatically and policymakers wanted to do something. Mandatory minimum law seemed like a good idea. Everyone who committed the same crime would have the same guaranteed sentence. Parole was limited and flexibility was taken from judges. Sentences would always be fair and politicians could get tough on crime. Everybody's happy, right? Well, no, not really. I think, I think that there is human emotion. I don't know that you can program emo human emotion and, and intuition and, and compassion into a computer. So, no, I do not believe that and I think uh, there is a, there's basic intelligence, but I think there's a human dignity and compassion and a lot of other human qualities that only human beings possess. And, and I don't think you can artificially create those other things. When we do sentencing guidelines, um, which are essentially like what are advisory to the judges when formulating a sentence, you just punch in numbers, but a lot of times there's some mitigating factors that are important. I think everyone needs to have discretion um, because every case is different. You can't treat every case like it's the same. You see, judges, I, I can reduce your speed, you know. I cannot impose you the $250 fine. You come to court, you say, Judge, I'm a high school student. I work part-time at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> on Saturdays. I don't make $250 in three weeks, okay? I reduce your fine to $75. Judges can do that. If you reduce the mandatory minimums, I believe then we can see does it reduce discrimination. Judges are also chosen by the state because of their extensive experience and ability to do the right thing. 
To apply, they have to go through a very extensive process. You go through a rigorous, rigorous vetting process. Uh, first you have to apply. Then you fill out an application, which is 38 pages long. Then you go before a judicial nominating commission. And then if they deem you qualified, you make the first cut. And then from there, it's a completely different process. Then you have to hmm, get support. And it's then the governor's decision. So discretion is extremely uh, in, in, important. And people who get the benefit of it like it. The people who feel that they got the brunt of it don't. And with respect to judges' discretion, sort of coming full circle, would you want sentences to be done by a computer? Would you want it to be, okay, you were going home tonight, you were speeding, okay, $250 fine and five points, period. No. Would you want that kind of system? Judges need all of their discretion in order to make a decision that can help to rehabilitate or save, in the case of Mr. Lay, the criminal, in order to successfully reintegrate them into society. They shouldn't be excoriated for having a heart. Don't let politicians become judge, jury, and executioner. Let judges do their jobs and choose a fair sentence to fit each unique crime. The bottom line is we've got to make sure that our criminal justice system does not perpetuate a cycle of hopelessness, but rather lifts people up. So candidates of the 2016 presidential election, my question to you is how do you feel about judicial discretion?